The lighting of the traditional nanipak, the seal oil lamp, brings together ancient elements from the earth and sea. Iyakat, Ivruk, and Okshuk, stone, moss, and seal oil that helped Arctic peoples survive. Nanipak also symbolizes the bringing together of many Arctic peoples to rekindle the traditional Northwest Native Trade Fair. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of people met peaceably at Sisolik or Kikiktaruk. They traded, conducted diplomacy, gathered food, told stories, danced, and competed in commonly known games. Katit kigyulik put kuyanaktok. Funding is provided by the Kotzebue IRA Council and the Shared Beringian Heritage Program of the National Park Service. Trade fair games involved almost every part of the body and required skill, strength, agility, endurance, and sometimes pain. They reflected the daily lives of already hunting people. Okay, hold that board. If you're working with rope and you're hauling animals, your grip has to be strong. And sometimes your grip not only has to be strong, but your grip has to be strong long. It's like a tug of war, is to pull the contestant over or take the stick away with a steady pull. I'm just slipping. <laughs> well, if you started with your hands on the inside, the next pull, your hands are on the outside. But it, it's a coordination of strength. You're pushing on your feet, you're pulling with your arms, you're working your back, and equally important, you're maintaining your grip on that stick. Okay. The winner of the contest is that person who uh, wins two out of three. With your free hand, you grab uh, below your wrist, kind of in your forearm area, and you pull yourself up so you're off the floor. The people holding the dowel then walk and see how far you can go. And there are times when you twist and turn on that, if it's not even, your skin around your wrist will get pinched. So you have to endure that kind of pain. And, and the winner is that person who is able to go the greatest distance. The ability to fillet a fish uh, with a lulu or a knife, it's a real, I think, uh, testament to their ability to put up a lot of fish in a very short period of time if necessary. In, in such a way that the tail is still attached, but it's filleted on both sides, hung, and then cut with little slits so that when you put it on the drying rack, it maximizes the air's ability to dry the fish. <laughs> <laughs> the 
kayak is is, uh, is a boat traditionally usually made out of out of driftwood and then covered with the meuruk skin. And that's how a lot of our elders went out and and hunted. So everyday kind of activities, even like using a kayak, you can make a fun event out of it. We like to have fun in those kayaks and, uh, and have races just to see how well somebody could do because maneuverability gets to be kind of a challenge. <laughs> Seal hooking contest is a demonstration of developing a skill that when you kill an animal, whether it's a muskrat, whether it's a floating duck in a lake, um, or a seal on ice, or a seal in the water, that you can you have the ability, the accuracy to throw your hook the distance to the target, snag it, and bring it in. but it's about retrieving the food that you're trying to bring back home. Make sure you try it down here. Don't you know the seal got short arms? Daisy Lane from Point Hope is going to show us how it's done. This is really a painful game. It, 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 you have skin knuckles. Your arms get tired. A person gets down on their hands and toes in a position on their knuckles and on their toes in like a midway push-up position. And then you begin to hop only on your knuckles and toes. There he goes. That's and your I'm body going. must stay in a prone position. After a certain point, if you can get your mind away from the pain, it goes away. Okay, and what you need to do here, your legs are gonna go one, and then when you go, you're gonna try and lock low, and then flip the other person over. Okay, the object is to flip them over. And one of the tricks on this is to make sure your body is straight. One, two, three, go. Okay, now switch sides. Yeah. Is ready? Here the winner is uh, okay. the One. person who can get two out of two. out of three. Three. Go. Okay, now go back to the go. Okay. Go. Go. Okay. Now you guys can lock your arms. Yeah. Like this, all the way to the elbow. And then what you're going to do is going to be like a tug of war. Right there. Okay. Now Danny's going to tell you one, two, three, go. You know, you know, a long time ago when the men used to go out. And they'd be hunting, you knew they had to be tough, right? Okay, right here. But the women would get left at home 
to take care of not only the kids, but all of the stuff around the house. They'd even hunt the stuff and snare and trap close to the house, pack the wood and all that. They had to be tough too. And they would play these games. Sometimes the men would bring back lots. Couple good exact bulls on here. Yeah, they gotta pluck as fast as they can. All the feathers. All the feathers. How fast can you pluck a duck but make it clean? All the feathers. Removing the down, enduring the little kumaks that might be on there, you know, the little fleas that might be on there, and not screaming and jumping and hollering, but getting through that, uh, being efficient, being fast, uh, knowing that you're gonna feed somebody with this. Wet. Make their fire and then start making the. Look at this guy! Yay! Yeah. You can't eat feathers, are you? are too, look at Hers was cleaner! And, and they talk about bringing pokes, seal pokes of muck duck and just slitting one open and that was free for anyone to, uh, oh, I imagine how delicious it must have been. Everybody is given a piece of muck duck, about the same size. It pays to have a sharp knife for Ulu, and this is for both men and women. When you cut it up, you're done, you stand up. But they can't have nothing in their mouth? They can't have nothing in your mouth. You gotta swallow it. Okay? One, two, three, go! And for the muktak eating contest, we're eating the bowhead whale. And so that usually comes from Point Hope, Wainwright, Barrel. And they're always very gracious. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're not done. Stay down. Hurry up, you guys. do make me embarrassed. What's your name? Walt Chill. Quick food at camp has always been important. Three, two, Nowadays, one, donuts are go. a favorite. <laughs> Everything was donated by the hospital, so the patients will benefit from that by having the donor. We have Claudia Cendrola coming in first with a time of 10 minutes and 13 seconds, followed by Ruthie at 11 minutes and 4 seconds. And the muskrat in the springtime is a very important, not only for our diets, but it, it's fur. And it just turned inside out towards the head. Get the ears, Move the eyes, and then all the way over to the mouth, it'll still stay in one piece. And you have to be able to skin the muskrat, uh, knowing that it's gonna be used for clothing. So you don't wanna put any holes in it, and uh, and you want to do it quickly. And the person who can do it, who can skin the muskrat, the cleanest and quickest, generally is a person who will win. And he was skinning muskrat since he was 12 years old, and we have Pete Henry. Lorinda is wearing a parkie made and owned by Minnie Norton. The body is made of muskrat bellies, the tassels are wolverine, and the back of the hood is made of muskrat heads pieced together. The cuffs are made of beaver, the ruff is a sunshine ruff. Good afternoon.
the skin sewing and clothing skills are displayed in a fashion show. And so what you see now are cloth designs as well as fur designs, um, traditional and contemporary clothing, and it's generally a beautiful display of especially our women's ability to make beautiful clothing for, for their families and for themselves. The Miss Arctic Circle Contest they have to be able to display through a form of talent their knowledge of their then culture. The next day the ladies would skin the muskrat and they put it on the pelt structure to dry for about four to six days. Long ago the ladies would sit down on the beach and sing, grab some rocks and juggle them and they would sing a song that I like to sing. <laughs> If they dropped the rocks, they would have to start the singing over. And I'll be telling you a story in Inupiaq and then translating it in English. The seven values that have most meaning to me are respect for the elders because they give us the wisdom. The ladies have to answer questions, impromptu questions. But the questions more have to do with knowledge of culture. Well, if I were to leave outside to the States, I'd miss our subsistence lifestyle the most. If aliens landed in Katsubu, what would you like to tell them about us? If aliens landed in Katsubu, I would tell them, <laughs> welcome to Katsubu. <laughs> The blanket toss has its roots in sacred ceremony for hunters to shed oil and blood from the season's whaling harvest. But we're going to need lots of help, but we're going to have the women's competition for the... A new whaling captain catches his first whale. That new whaling captain, his wife, and all of the crew members get tossed the successful whaling crews get tossed. They said, if a woman between whaling seasons gives birth to a boy, they would generally get on the skin with gifts. And the elder, especially the elderly women, will gather around the edge of the skin. And as that person is tossed, she will throw those gifts to the elders 
This is in hopes that that young boy will grow up to be a successful whaler or be part of a whaling crew. was used to see longer distances when they were waiting. Now we use it for fun. You know, it's always been, I think, kind of fun to be the one who's been thrown. We do this now in a competitive forum, and, and people are judged basically on their height, their form, their ability to keep their balance. guys that you that I learned to do the blanket toss from used to use what we call a seal poke so just kind of like doing a jump rope with a seal poke when you're up in the air okay pillars thank you a job well done so you have to Jump up, kick the target successfully, land on the floor, both feet simultaneously, and maintain your balance. That is a successful attempt. My dad, he was what they called a boyer, and which is kind of like a, an apprentice uh, for the whaling crew. He was their gopher, uh, probably about 12 years old. When a whale had been caught, one of the things that he had to do was to run back to the community. When he got from the ice to the land and inside of the community, uh, <clears throat> as he was running into town, he would jump up and kick both feet in the air, kind of like what you see in a two-foot high kick. But this was more of a signal that a, a whale had been caught. And, uh, and this way, without having to say anything and from a, a, a distance when people saw this they knew that a whale had been caught and they should get ready to go down to the lead and help bring in the whale when dad on, a, on an occasion or two when dad did this an elderly woman uh, would run out and greet him and she would run alongside of him as he ran into the community and every time he jumped up and kicked his feet in the air uh, she would jump and kick alongside of him and he got a little uh, um, okay, I guess good. chagrined uh, because yeah, good, not man. only could she run alongside of him and keep up but she could kick higher than he could and uh, <clears throat> when it was out right and he was at the age come where coming into yeah, manhood you, you didn't want to be bested out, by a woman okay. now you want to kick up okay good David got it. Yes. You don't have to kick it hard. Yeah, he got it on his first attempt. So did Calvin. Calvin must be getting serious, so he took off his cap. Better. Better. Because you let it you let it kick out. Just practice that. Good. Okay. 
paglan. Tawar po yung mukoro ka lao kay tawara. Anak tao di kangit tema ni aglan inuwe chule. Pilgunit na or pilgunit na mako. Sit ko may rakka ka nilawit na tema yung makilong tao nga tuta ka tao dit. Anak tao dit wag damit na kanyak na nilawit. Tema tao tao na chak to dublok. Tao tao na tilagay. Akrajar lo watam na. Aglan, doktor na pagtaw tema, magkablo at chat kut. I like to see it play different games in the way it was played to show the actual way it's done, even for demonstration purposes. Supervised by Truman or someone like myself who's seen these games, I would like to see that. Inupak traditional games are now part of international competition. Elders continue to demonstrate other games that are less frequently seen. Traditions, knowledge and connections were renewed and shared by peoples from Chikatka, St. Lawrence Island and Northwest Alaska during the 1996 trade fair. Many traditional skills and stories are still being passed on. Dances are being relearned from those who kept traditions alive. The traditions of the Northwest Native Trade Fair continue. Funding is provided by the Kotzebue IRA Council and the Shared Beringian Heritage Program of the National Park Service.